all right guys welcome back to another g auto repair youtube video and today we're going to be troubleshooting this 2004 dodge ram 1500 and the complaint is that it's overheating but it overheats according to the customer when it's a lot of stop and go traffic where he's not driving once he gets on the highway and go he uh he's good to go but when he stops and go or gets stuck in a in a traffic jam the temperature starts to go up so that right there tells me that it's a possible flow problem um that he's experiencing in the cooling system so i'm just gonna go through the basic steps that i go through when troubleshooting uh cooling systems and uh the way that uh, that it overheats helps us to to try to determine what the issue is so the first thing you want to do is just cover all your basics make sure that there's uh coolant in the radiator which i already checked and it is low the radiator is about i would say about halfway empty so that right there tells me that that could possibly be my over my overheating problem lack of coolant there's not enough uh water flowing through the system to keep the engine cool so i didn't i did not see any obvious leaks when he pulled up and it was getting up there i just waited and and, and let it cool i brought it in so it cooled down a little bit but i did notice that the temperature needle was going up it was past the halfway point three quarters of a way to the h and i would touch this and it will be cool to the touch okay so that tells me there's a flow restriction or in this case probably lack of coolant so other things that could uh, cause the engine to overheat is poor fan performance and to check that you just want to this is a fan clutch system so if it's electric it's a little different but you want to make sure these fans are working um, you just I just like to spin this a few times and see if it softens up it kind of starts to free 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 spin which in this case it was not doing that um, you want to obviously check for obvious leaks which I didn't see nothing right off the bat but we're gonna kind of check a little further into that um, the thermostat could be sticking closed or not opening completely that could cause an overheating problem and uh, the water pump itself can be not circulating the water as it should and normally that happens because the impellers in the pump they get eaten up due to electrolysis poor maintained cooling system and uh the coolant becomes acidic it uh, starts to break down the metal in the impeller it starts to eat it and eventually you have no impeller so you can't push no or flow no um coolant obviously if this breaks then obviously you have no water pump which is the belt so you want to check all those basic things so right now i checked the coolant it is low what I am going to do is I am going to top it off and then I am going to turn on the car, let it let it get hot, nice and hot, see if it continues to overheat. If it doesn't, then I know that was my issue, but more likely we're having a coolant loss somewhere. I'm not sure where, but somewhere we're having a coolant loss. So just sit on tight and let me top this off real quick and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I went ahead and topped off the uh, radiator. It took about half a gallon of water. And these are pretty big systems, so... Um, wasn't too bad, but it was half of... Just about half of the radiator, so... Um, I topped it off. I started the engine. And I'm letting it warm up now. So, like I mentioned earlier, what you want to do is just do some basic checks look at the fan see how it's working um it seems to be pushing or should i say pulling a good amount of uh, air through the radiator so i'm not too worried about the fan or anything associated with it the belt seems to be working as it should i'm just giving it some time for it to warm up and uh, see if it's going to continue to overheat um obviously after that i want to check and see if there's any coolant leak. So the the level started rising a little bit, so I went ahead and put the cap on it so I won't have a mess 
in the floor. So we're gonna let that get more temperature. And then we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this ordeal. So this hose is already pretty warm. Um, a lot of people tend to look at this jug, the reservoir, and they say, oh no, it's got plenty of water. Look, it's full. Um, don't always go by the level of this. You take the time and remove the cap when it's cool and it's safe to do so. Because if you open this when it's pressurized, you're gonna get hurt. Because this is hot water in there under pressure. It even says it on the on the uh, on the cap. Do not open when hot. Okay, what is supposed to happen? What is supposed to happen is as the water and pressure increases, because uh, as you heat up the water, it tends to expand, increasing pressure. Once it gets to a certain rating of the cap, which in this case is 16 PSI, any remaining pressure is supposed to kind of bleed it into the tank, and that's why you see this. This is like an overflow bottle here. It's supposed to, the level will go up, and then it goes down. As it cools, it goes down, it heats up, it goes up. So there's levels here that tells you the water should be somewhere in between these two points, which it is. So you would assume, oh, we're good, we got water. But guess what? it may it's supposed to when it cools down it's supposed to draw the water back in from here and put it back in the radiator which sometimes doesn't happen so that's why you may have a full jug here but when you open the cap you have half of a radiator uh that's empty and that that gives a problem that is an issue because you you, you decrease the cooling capacity of this radiator by half so that's probably our issue Maybe that's why we're overheating, but I just want to go through all the steps so I can, one, show you guys if you're having overheating problems, and two, to make sure I cover all my bases. When it first, I will mention that when it first showed up and it was overheating, I, t I would touch this and it would be cool to the hand, kind of like what it is now, but the engine is still kind of cool, so, um, so that was a, a clue that something was not right, because this should be pretty warm, uh, pretty hot actually. Especially on this end because this is the inlet and the outlet is over here. So as it as the water flows through the radiator, it starts to cool off. That's that's the whole port purpose. So it's going to be cooler at one end than at the, than in the other. But it can't be too it can't be too cool either. So let's check the temperature gauge. See where it's uh, at right now. So we're about the halfway point. Let me go ahead and turn off the AC. The check engine light is on, but I'm sure that's because it overheated. And it's probably setting off a, an overheating code or something. So I'm just gonna hold this. Just get it to where it needs to be. And Make sure that thermostat opens the way it's supposed to. Okay. So I'm just going to hold that for a few minutes like that. Alright. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it, let it get hotter and, and warm up. I'm going to do that off camera. You know, I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here for an hour and wait for all this. So, I'm going to put a pause on the video right now. And when it gets up to temperature the way that I want it to get, and then I'll get back on and I'll, I'll resume with the, uh, with the troubleshoot. Alright guys, so the car has been running for quite a while now. I even took it on a test drive. No overheating problems. It's perfectly, uh, the needle is perfectly where it needs to be. The uh, radiator, I feel that it's nice and warm here, and it cools down as it goes across, which is what is to be expected. Um, so I am convinced that it was low on coolant, that's why we were having an overheating problem. All right, so I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn this off, and uh, I wanna pressure test the system before I get any further. 
all right so we're back here with the dodge ram and uh i went ahead and pressure tested the cooling system off camera um i'm sorry i got a little crazy there for a minute so i had to kind of rush through things and uh but i do have a video if you're wondering how to pressure test a cooling system i do have a video i'm gonna try to put a link into the description uh, of that video on how to how to pressure test a cooling system to find leaks and things of that nature but basically what i did is i uh i followed the procedures that i normally do and uh, which i do show on that video and then i started losing pressure now these dodge engines um especially the hemis and apparently this one for that matter uh they tend this is a 4.7 by the way they tend to leak through the head gasket so there's coolant leaking into the uh what do you call it the uh combustion chamber so it's burn slowly burning off the coolant that's why this system was low because it's just leaking into the combustion chamber and it's being burned off as you're driving down the road um, normally a symptom of that would be first thing in the morning when you start the truck up sometimes you can detect a uh, a misfire or several misfires and it'll only last for about a minute or so and as soon as it burns off that water in there it'll it'll get normal and then it'll keep on trucking for the whole day without any issues so if you have a dodge ram pickup that's doing that um you have like a misfire in the morning and then it goes away as as soon as the the engine warms up just a little bit it goes away and it gives you no problem for the rest of the day until the next day your chances are you're leaking cooling into your 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 cylinder um and obviously you're gonna notice that your engine coolant is gonna be the level is gonna be going up and down on its own with no apparent external leaks so that's what we had here um i pulled the plug number eight because it did have a check engine light which i thought it was because of the overheating well it turned out i had a random misfire and a cylinder number eight misfire uh, coupled with uh evap small leak codes um, so I'm not sure if they may have left the cap on off or something. I don't know at some point uh, Or they do have a, a leak in the evap system But I did pull that plug the number eight which is that one back there and I stuck a camera And I was able to confirm while pressure testing the system that that is in fact leaking so I'm gonna try to see if I could put a picture of it there so you guys can see it um what i'm talking about so that solves this issue that's why this car was overheating it was low on coolant and it was low on coolant because it's leaking uh cooling into the cylinder while it's being operated and it's burning off the water so case uh solved um i told the customer already he's gonna have to be on top of this uh, uh coolant level until he decides what he wants to do in this situation they're gonna have to probably re replace the head gasket maybe um i don't know depending on what happened i don't know if it overheated to a point where it might have warped the head or the block or whatever i, th I think these blocks are iron i'm not 100 percent sure or i know the heads are aluminum but i'm not sure about the block um the block may be iron i, I don't remember off the top of my head but um, he may have to do some major engine repair here if he wants to fix that so Well guys, this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the, the Information and it's helpful to somebody out there. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so and we'll catch you on the next video. Ciao